everybody welcome back to my channel this is Kathy at Attic Treasures etc and I have been playing with alcohol inks for maybe the last week and a half and just been having a ball I feel like a kid with a brand new box of, the big box of crayons so what I thought I would do today is share with you some of the things that I've made and some of the techniques that I used and, and we'll um, do them on camera and I'm still a beginner at it so I'm still learning and, and watching videos myself so um, I used a, a couple of different kinds of substrates. This one is glossy photo paper. And I'm gonna stand up to make sure that you can see this. Yeah, so this one was done on glossy photo paper. And what is recommended is to use something called UFO. Now, it doesn't really work very well with regular paper because you need to use something that's non-porous. So it will work with glass and metal and plastic and um, you know, basically non-porous surfaces. So this is an example of one that I did on UPO, and UPO is, um, it's like paper, but it's actually plastic. So it doesn't absorb into the paper like it would if it were just regular copy paper or watercolor paper or something like that where it just sucks the ink down and then it doesn't really do anything for you. But I honestly didn't really find a whole lot of difference in the results between the UPO and the photo paper. Now the UPO is pretty expensive. Um, I bought this, um, this little package of five by seven UPO sheets. It's white cardstock is what, it, what it's called. It comes in white and then something else. There's 10 pieces and it was $10. So it was a dollar a sheet. I have tons of photo paper from when I used to do scrapbooking and I, I buy it by the box at Costco. So I have these, um, what are these, three and a half? Yeah, three and a half by five. And then I've also got a bunch of eight by 10. So since I didn't really see a lot of the difference in the quality between the photo paper and the UPO, I think I'll just go ahead and stick with my, um, with my photo paper. I also tried a couple of other different uh, media or substrates too. This is this is photo paper. This is this is one technique that I have been having a lot of fun with that I'll demonstrate. This is a totally different technique. It's complete. It's really dramatic and probably because of the different colors and stuff that I use. But I like kind of like the way that it turned out. I, I'm not really sure what I'm going to do with this one yet, but time will tell. And these are just backgrounds. This one is uh, Yupo. I really like the colors with this one too. I hope you can see that. And then I also did some um, with some transparencies. So what I used was just some uh, transparency film that I picked up at the thrift store, not really knowing what I was going to use it for, but now um, I've been having fun using it with uh, with the alcohol inks. They wrapped really well on it. And this has um, like a shiny side and um, a rough side. And I tried it on both sides and it worked equally well. But one thing that you can do with this is to um, stamp a butterfly stamp onto it and then uh, cut fussy cut around it. I did try using my cuddle bug with it, hoping to to cut out like some flowers or something and it didn't really work very well. So I might wait until I fire up my Cricut and then uh, use it for some shapes there. This is also a different substrate. It's the uh, Tim Holtz foil sheets. So these are from Tim Holtz foil sheets, uh, foil tape sheets. And I really like the way this turned out. It's really kind of grungy. It has a real grungy, steampunky uh, theme vibe to it and um, I actually did some with this foil tape in more of a purple and blue tones and then uh, put it through my my cuddle bug with the Tim Holtz like a industrial type uh, embossing folder and then used it to cover the top of this box so shabby chic sort of meets steampunk on this one but anyway that was just one way that I used it because I was just playing and having fun and then I also put uh, this one this is a, a 
photo paper and I put this one through my cuddle bug and then um, you know to emboss these leaves on it and then I went over it with some Gilder's paste wax and then outlined it with um, a fine tipped pen and I love the way that one turned out that'll look really good on a card or you can even cut it down and use it on a pocket or something like that and then this one I love this one this one has a lot of different colors in it I used my embossing, uh, my cuddle bug to emboss these flowers on there and then um, highlighted them with the Gilder's Paste Wax and then collaged on one of Tim Holtz, um, sorry about the glare, the transparent butterflies so that you can see everything through it and I really like the way that turned out. There's another technique that you can use with um, alcohol lift ink where you can stamp and I'll demonstrate this and hopefully it'll work um, like a stamp uh, in this case I used a butterfly and then it lifts the ink off and then you've got like this ghost image of a butterfly there you can see a little bit better there I also tried using uh, the lift ink with a stencil and I wasn't real excited about the way that turned out so I don't know if I'll do that one again Here's another one, different technique. So I'll demonstrate both techniques and then with the with three ghost butterflies. It doesn't the camera doesn't pick it up real well, but there's one right here, one right here, and then one there we go, right there. So I like that. So why don't we go ahead and get started? Okay, so I've protected my work surface with a piece, I'm just using a piece of wax paper, and then I've got some uh, glossy photo paper, but you don't want to use the glossy shiny side, you want to use the back side. And I've got a couple of different kinds of alcohol inks here. This one is um, by Ranger. This one I bought online a while back. Um, and I'm not, I can't remember where it came from, but I've got a couple of different kinds. And after having used them for a little while, I think I actually prefer the Ranger ones, but you know, it's kind of a toss up. And then this one, I just got at Hobby Lobby. They were having an amazing sale. They were 89 cents a piece and there was one left and it was this one. Uh, so I have a few different colors here. I also have um, some blending solution that I'll use and some isopropyl, alcohol it's 91% you need 91% or higher in order for the ink to react because the ink or the alcohol in the inks is ethanol and it won't react with anything lower than 91% and so we just got this at Walmart but not everybody carries it all the time so it was it, it was a while before I actually was able to run across it uh, let's see got my little my little blending tool and then these little felt pads that you can get it uh, I don't know Hobby Lobby or Joanne or whatever and uh, they work really well you can't really use the foam pads the felt pads work really well though okay so to get started I have my alcohol ink or my alcohol my 91% alcohol in this little needle tip bottle and then I'm just gonna um, lightly you know put some alcohol down here on on this uh, photo paper and then I'm gonna get a couple of different colors I'm gonna use what is this called? Stream. And we'll use this lime green. And let's use some yellow. This one is Sunshine Yellow by Ranger. And then this orange, which is by the Sig, Sig Wong, I guess is the name of it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just put some drops of alcohol on my my pad here not alcohol alcohol ink <laughs> and then we're just going to tap 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 it on and then I'm also going to use a little bit of blending solution this is a brand new bottle so I'm just opening it for the first time okay so you just tap 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 And when it touches the alcohol, which dries really fast, so it's good to actually do this kind of backwards. Should have had the uh, the colors on my ink pad first, and then put the alcohol. But I don't know if you can see it, but the alcohol causes the ink to react in such a way that it kind of blooms out.
to add a little bit more color. Oh, can you see that and how it blooms out? Kind of. <laughs> so that's kind of fun. And then uh, you just, the nice thing about this is that you can just keep going until you like it. And if there's a spot that you don't like, well, you can just put some alcohol on it and it's kind of an eraser. So if I were to drop some alcohol, just, just a drop. There, you, can you see that? How it just sort of moves everything aside. But then I can take some more of this blue and just add it in there. And like I said, I'm still such a beginner. I've been binge watching videos on alcohol inks and some people can paint with it and just come up with these absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous paintings. And I'm just not there yet. <laughs> I don't know if I ever will be. Can you see how it's kind of blooming out? I like all the little uh, dark lines on the edges of the alcohol. It kind of looks like clouds. And again, you can just keep going and get it as dark and intense as you want, or you can kind of keep it more light. Whatever your, whatever your fancy is, you can cover all of this like I'm doing or not. Now I'm going to take something called Mixative and this is kind of a metallic and you have to shake it up. I'm just going to dab a couple drops on here like so. And then this will add in a little bit of a kind of a gold what, what's the color of this this is called gold <laughs> okay that was easy just like these gold like if you're looking at a um like a quartz rock and it has or fool's gold or something like that what's it called mica <laughs> and then it just adds that uh that little bit of a sheen in there little bits of gold flecks if you can see that Hopefully you can. Okay, now if I want to, I can even add to make this a little bit more, give it a little bit more uh, drama. I can add a little bit of red. A little bit of blending solution. And it adds just a little bit more color to it. And every time you do this, it's different. So um, it's, <laughs> it's really fun to see how they come out. Let's do a little bit more of this more intense blue and see what happens there. Ooh, that's kind of cool. The other day when I was doing this, um, I had my tablet, my iPad next to me, and I was watching and listening to the, um, it's like the, uh, the James Webb telescope, and I was so inspired by what I was seeing from the universe, from that telescope, that I was just, that's kind of how I felt, I would, you know, what I was creating is like images from from that telescope. I just, I thought it was a lot of fun. Just so much beauty. Oh, I really, really like that. Really like that a lot. Love those colors. I love ocean colors. So anything with blues and greens and uh, just anything like that. So another thing that we can do is I have a little mister with with some of the 92 or 91 percent alcohol in it by the way you never want to put your alcohol inks into a spray bottle or a mister like this because they have resin in them and it, when it goes into a mist when you spray it out into a mist it can get into your lungs and that's not good you don't want resin in your lungs so if i start way up here 
this thing, I never know which way it's going to go. No matter which way I um, point it, it seems to want to go somewhere else. I think I need to clean the nozzle. So it gives it, um, what, what it will do is make little, I don't know if you can see how, see how it's like separating some of it into uh, bigger puddles. So then if I want, I can dry it a little bit. You really don't need to because the, it'll dry really fast. But I really, really like the way that came out. It almost looks a little bit like a hydrangea. See how, oh, so pretty. Okay, so um, I really like that. So I'm just going to set that off to the side. And then we'll try a different substrate. I want to try um, some transparency film. The thing with transparency film is that when you uh, decide how you're going to use it, you can still see through it. So I've just got some mostly blue on my pad right now. And you can take these off and, and change them out uh, and start with a fresh one if you want. Let's go ahead and put some alcohol on the, on the transparency. There we go, now we're cooking with gas. Let's get some green in there. And maybe, why don't we try some purple? So we're doing blues and purples now. And again, I'm just doing the tap tap method. There's another method too that we'll try next. So you can leave this as translucent or transparent as you want, or you can just keep on going. Add a little red for drama. Isn't that fun? Oh my word. I've been wanting to work on my Drama Queen journal and I haven't been able to tear myself away from these inks. So I've had these for about a year and I've been completely intimidated by them until one day, and this is how it usually works with me, I decide that's enough. That's enough intimidation, Kathy. Master it, you know, get over it, get over yourself and your fear and, um, just try this stuff. Turn on a video, and that's what I did. I turned on a, a, a Tim Holtz video and kind of worked along with him and just got my feet wet and my fingers inky because I forgot to put gloves on. <laughs> I did the same thing with my Instant Pot. I kid you not. My Instant Pot sat in the trunk of my car for three months before I got up the courage to use it. What is it with that? I am not usually that intimidated by things, but once I do decide, okay, it's time. Don't be ridiculous. Just do it. Now, honestly, I use my Instant Pot all the time. I was like, what in the world was I worried about? Don't be a chicken like me. <laughs> Just do it. Okay, let's put a little bit of orange on there, just for fun. And what we're getting here is just, again, just backgrounds that you can do things with. Uh, imagine this, like, cut out in the shape of a heart or... Um, a flower or a butterfly or, you know, basically anything. Okay, we're going to get a little more red in there. Oh, actually, why don't we do some green? It doesn't have enough green in it. Oh, 
Okay, I really like that. So I'm going to set this one aside and then do a different kind of technique that I saw Tim Holtz do. And I'm going to do that on the photo paper again. Then we use not this side, not the shiny side, but the back side. So what I'm doing now is I'm going to use this little blower thing. And you can use a straw or um, a blow dryer on cool, something like that. So let's go ahead and um, put some alcohol on the paper. And then we're going to drip some colors on. And then you use this blower to kind of spread it around. And you get a totally different effect. I'm going to take this mixative and shake it up a little bit. And just put a couple of drops. Okay, so I'm going to drip a little bit more alcohol in some of these other spots. and add uh, some more color. I'm going to try some, do I add any purple? Let's add some purple. And I am just playing. These, you know, you can use uh, more monochromatic colors like I did with um, this one where I use reds and oranges and golds and yellows. So, you know, you can do whatever you want. Let's put a little bit more alcohol down. And I'm gonna add a little bit more of this uh, stream color. Now if I want to, with the mister, ooh, <laughs> oh that's awesome. Can you see what's happening there? It's just getting these bubbles in it like a galaxy. Okay, I'm actually loving that. So I'm going to set that aside. And now I would like to try using these, um, their gold or their silver foil labels that I picked up at the thrift store and they're matte silver foil. And since it's a non-porous surface, why not see what happens here? Okay. So I'm going to put some blending solution on and Let's try, this is called fuchsia, this color. And let's see, we'll put on some purple and some blue. Now I can do the whole section here because one of the things I did before with this was to um, use my, my cuddle bug to cut flowers out of it and I'll show you an example. And then I'm going to get a new pad and now I'm going to use some greens and yellows 
in orange. And put some alcohol down there. I think I want a little more green. Oh, let's get some blending solution too. It doesn't seem to want to blend as well on this foil, but I'll show you what I did with it when I'm finished here. So on this one, I think I'm going to add a little bit of a spritz of alcohol to break that up a little bit. First of all, let's get a little more green on here and a tiny bit more orange. So this is one of the things that I did with the, uh, um, I did a whole bunch of these circles and then I put them through my die cut machine, my, my cuddle bug, and I made flowers and leaves. And so I made this journal card this is one circle that I had actually embossed with uh, my cuddle bug and then I cut out the leaves and the flowers and put them on like that and then I also made this beautiful belly band where I cut the um, the shapes of the flowers out of the circles and then I put the circles that I had cut the shapes out of back down on this piece of vellum and then kind of put the flowers on top so that you've got some that are that are open and then some of the flowers and stuff on there. And then these are ones that I used for leaves, which is why I did the different colors. I also took one of the clusters that I made from the scrap strips and one of the circles from the foil here and put that on there with a fussy cut of an owl and it looks like he's kind of in front of the moon. So all different ways that you can use these in your junk journals for clusters or belly bands or backgrounds on pockets or cut out flowers or what have you. Now the other, the next thing that I wanted to try, which I haven't tried out yet, so this will be kind of an experiment, is these labels here. These are clear shipping labels. So I'm gonna take a sheet, well actually one that I've cut out Okay, so I have one of these labels uh, cut and ready to go, and it's uh, basically this size. So I'm going to put some alcohol on there first. We'll see if it'll um, react well with the, with the little blower thingy. Let's get a little bit more of that fuchsia. I'm just going to put a little, I'm going to change the pad, and I'm going to put a little bit of um, the mixative on the pad and uh, some blending solution and see what happens. So it's got these little flecks of gold in with these bright, vibrant colors. And then the colors are kind of blooming out too because of the blending solution. So 
So I really like the way that turned out. So then if we peel it off, which I'm not going to do all the way, then we have this uh, translucent sticky um, label that we can use as a background in our junk journals, maybe for collage or something like that, or cut it in strips. And speaking of cutting it in strips, the next thing I want to do is show you how to make old tape. Okay, so what I have here is some just regular scotch tape, and I'm going to lay some strips on a piece of transparency film, only because it will make it easier for me to store. So I'm just going to take some of this tape and lay a few strips of it on here on this film so I can get it back off when I want it. And it's going to be kind of hard to see in, at first. Oh, it's a terrible glare. And we'll just have a few on here. Okay, and I'm going to take my blending tool and a pad, felt pad. Oops, come back here. And I'm going to use orange and red. And this brown and yellow. A little bit of blending solution. And then find my tape. Put the towel under it so you can see it better. And you just tap over the tape with your colors until you like the way it looks. Something to, you know, grungy, grungy old tape. So you just keep going with that until you get the look that you want with your tape. And I'll show you another one uh, that I did. Did the same thing where I put it on that uh, that transparency film, and I got all these pieces of tape that I now have that I can use in my junk journals. No, oh, I wanted to show you the lifting. So let me get out a block. And I have um, a butterfly here. So let me see, which one do I want to try doing this on? I'll try doing it on this one. So this is Alcohol Lift Ink. And you just tap, 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 tap. Okay, so you just make sure it's on there really well. It's pressed down in there. And you can kind of see it. You can, can you see the shiny part on there? Okay, so that is the lifting. Now you can also see that I've got some ink now on this stamp. And what I could do with it is take some uh, paper. Okay, actually this is vellum, but it's white, so you'll be able to see it. And I can take the ink that's now on here and transfer it to this piece of white vellum. And now, because this is alcohol ink, this is permanent, which means you can use your distress oxides and, and anything else around it that you want and it won't bleed. Okay, now, the next thing you do with this is you take a soft towel, I'm going to use a paper towel, and you have to kind of dab it like this. Don't 
go like, don't wipe it yet because it'll smear. Believe me. <laughs> I've already tried that. Okay, so you just keep dabbing it off. Go one more time. And you always want to go to a clean spot on the towel. And now you can just lightly wipe in a circular motion and you can start to see the butterfly. It's kind of wispy, pretty little butterfly. Here, hopefully you can see that little butterfly in there. Yeah. Okay, so that's another way that you can use, another thing that you can do with your alcohol ink. And like I said, I am still really learning with this. Um, you, can, you can emboss it, and let's go ahead and try that. Okay, I have this embossing folder here, and it's a floral. Okay, put my my workpiece in there. Okay, before, before I show you what I'm going to do with this, I'm also going to take this piece, since I have the cuddle bug here, and I'm going to die cut some flowers because I think that's really pretty. So I'm just using some of these Tim Holtz flowers. Um, I think it's a wildflower set. I think that's what it's called and get as many flowers on here as I can. Let's take our flowers out first. Ta-da! And the nice thing about doing this, you know, once you uh, get these all off of here, is that they'll never turn out the same way twice. So you can have your own very unique flowers or your very own unique flowers. Nothing can be very unique. It's either unique or it's not. <laughs> um, anyway, you can have your own unique flowers that you made yourself. Okay, so that's one thing that you can do with your alcohol inks is make really pretty flowers. The other thing that you can do is emboss like I did in the um, in the embossing folder. And then I've got this Gilder's Paste Wax in antique gold. And I am just going to highlight the embossed part with the gold. I'm just running my finger very lightly over the top so that you just um, highlight the top parts, you, you know, the part that are sticking up to bring them into focus and then you can take a pen and outline if you so desire to bring them out even more okay so yeah, I really, really like that. I think that's super pretty. And put a sentiment on there or whatever you want. So uh, we can look and see what we what we've done. We did a couple of these so that I can use I can use these to cut flowers and leaves out of so that you can make things like these journal cards where you use the leaves and the and the flowers and layer them in different colors or a belly band like this. This is gonna go in my Drama Queen journal. Or you can uh, put it onto a box top like this. I haven't done the bottom yet. Let's see, what else did we do? We did some lift ink. Um, 
we made some tape. We only made one piece, but I've got all, all these others. I was just worried about the glare. So anyway, I hope you got something out of this. Um, I know I'm still having a lot of fun playing with these with these alcohol inks and, and trying out new and different things with it. So I hope you'll give it a try too. Uh, you can use the Ranger ones or you can use uh, some of the other brands on the market, whichever uh, suits your budget and your fancy. And, um, you know, just have fun. Don't be afraid of it like I was. I mean, seriously, I had these for a year. That's just ridiculous. Don't be like that. Be brave. Because otherwise, you know what? It's just, it's paper. I mean, it's, and if you find um, photo paper at the thrift store, pick it up and just play. Because why not? Why not? That's what we do, right? We recycle those things and find new and different ways to use them and just have fun with it. So again, I hope you liked it. And if you did, please give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. I love reading comments. And um, subscribe if you haven't already because, um, oh, look at that looks kind of pretty on there too. Put the, the flowers on top of another background. So anyway, squirrel. You, you caught me squirreling <laughs> accidentally. <laughs> but look how pretty oh yeah that's super pretty I like that okay anyway sorry have a great day everybody let the serendipity find you and happy crafting and I'll see you in the next video bye bye